when you're um, playing a role that's a darker role, for instance, in Rabbit Hole that yeah. you and I did, which was a very traumatic subject matter, and then most recently you did Luna Gale, uh, do you take, does that role follow you home? Do you take anything from that? Does it affect your everyday life? And how do you shake it off? Uh, yeah, no, okay, yeah. Well, I, I understand that. It's a, it's a very interesting thing because um, I think when you're doing a play, it becomes a muscle memory. If you're doing a film, it's easy just to invest yourself a thousand percent and then drop it. But to revisit it eight times a week and to create that world and where it has to be, it has to be authentic. So, um, hmm. It, I don't, I don't have any trouble shaking it off. I must admit. I think the bigger the character and the bigger the stakes, the easier it is for me to jump in and jump out. Because when you jump in, you're, you're on a moving train, and then when you get out, it, I like being able to look at it and go, "Wow, that was a good show," or "Did you hear the audience gasp on that?" Or mm. um, so I myself don't have any trouble stepping out of it. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoy the process of creating that bubble and creating that world and then letting it sit and breathe. And then when you do the show, you step into it. And then at the end, you can step out of it. And then, but, but sometimes I think if it's been a very emotional night, um, I, I, I don't get upset by it, but I really do. It's very, it's exhilarating actually. Yeah. Because you know that the job, the story is hitting the places where it needs to hit. Yes, right, that's, yeah, I can understand. But I feel that sometimes when you do it, the darker a role, the more, <laughs> the more uh, relieved and happy you are <laughs> once you've finished. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I mean, when we were rehearsing Luna Gale, and I remember in um, Rabbit Hole, I mean, we were ripping shreds. Hilarious, it was hilarious. And then when you're backstage, you're mucking around like crazy children yeah. Yeah. because it's the, it's the counterbalance for the drama. Yeah. The release, so yeah. It's a way of letting everyone know, hey, it's okay, I don't mean it. <laughs> when I shout at you and say, I hate you, I really love you. <laughs> and how did you first become involved uh, with your long relationship with the Ensemble Theatre? Okay, well, um, I actually, I, um, I, I wanted to uh, do my work experience at the Ensemble, and that was when Hayes was there. Mm. And, um, and I did, and I was seduced by... The um the way that the theatre focused purely on acting and storytelling with the ensemble, you really get the feeling that it's about the plays and about the audience, mm. and about creating a, a, as an as exciting and as an authentic experience uh, for the audience as possible. And I really got the feeling of family, um, mm. and I love the intensity of the space. I mean, it's a very intense space to work in as an actor, and uh, yes. I really yeah I dig that. Yeah. I love, I love the, the pressure that it creates. I, I like it. I enjoy it. And yeah, the intimacy of the uh, the audience is uh, is you feed off that energy. Actually, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's how they're, they're hugging you. Um, yeah. And then what I did was I volunteered as an usher, and worked behind the bar um, when I was 16, 17. I did that for a year and a half, and then I left school and went on my way. But then when I was leaving All Saints. Um, I got to, and you were, had gone back to England for a bit or something, and Sandra asked me, um, would I like to come do Chapter 2, Neil yeah. Simon Project? So I did that, and that was my first play at the Ensemble, and I was pinching myself mm. the whole time. Right. It's the weirdest thing at 40 to go back to the place where I was at 17, where a lot of my aspirations uh, were, um, were fueled. We've been at the, in the ensemble over the years for, in, in many different productions. Uh, uh, what are your uh, favourite parts about doing that? What, what are your favourite moments about being there, even? Um, well, I think... Well, I, I love doing Chapter 2 because it was the first play I did there. Yeah. I love doing Rabbit Hole with you because it was... I mean, I liked, I loved acting with you. I like doing a drama with you, actually. Uh, it was, it, we, and we could play. I think we found a way to play with it. Um, mm, mm. We trusted each other. And that writing by David Lindsay Abair, is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. I mean, beautiful writing. Yeah. And that great, you know, relationship writing where people know each other and they have similar pain, but they're seeing it from different points of view. And mm. um, I really enjoyed the process of doing that with you. Um, I loved Luna Gale. Uh, because the play, the stakes were high. 
it was a strange world and it was a very uh, traumatic world. But I think the, the playwright, Rebecca Gilman, just handled you so well. And the audience, even though it was confronting for them, especially the ensemble audience, they yeah. felt because she she managed to tell the story with it, with honesty, but also it's like these people are real and you probably know someone like this. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, I found that to be a very rewarding experience. Um, and then I, I did love, um, I've done a couple of David Williamson's there, which were just so... I mean, that was a revelation because in the, in the rehearsal room, David Williamson's play, it's like, I'm not quite getting a rhythm for this. I can't find it because mm. he's specific in the way he writes. And it's not until you get in front of an audience that you understand how he sets things up and how they play out. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I really enjoy that process. But And then Murder on the Wireless was so fun last year. I mean, it was so fun to play <laughs> with a sold out crowd. Well, yes, writing as we go. That was uh, that was like the old uh, days of um, Saturday Night Live, or that sort of it reminded me of the old television that you you open one version of the play, and by the by the end of the run, we had a completely different version. I remember going in every day, cutting reams of dialogue, saying, "We're doing this version." You go, hold on a minute, I need my pen, and nipping next door into your dressing room, coming out. What is it? Um, and refining it. It was great. It was interesting, though, wasn't it? An interesting process of, as you were just saying about the David Williamson, what an audience gives you it was uh, I thought it was fascinating of oh okay this needs to do this because of that's yeah. what we're feeling from the performance of the night before and so we, sh yeah. we shaped it I was much happier by the last um, few weeks than the first yeah. two and yeah. ha not having said that it, it worked on its own level but in terms of your own satisfaction I think we we, exactly. we enjoyed yeah. ourselves more <laughs> <laughs>